DAI presents a groundbreaking exhibition revealing what happened when prominent painters and sculptors turned their attention to the stage and collaborated with writers, musicians, and dancers. Picasso to Hockney, featuring more than 120 objects of set and costume designs and insights into the artists and movements from cubism and constructivism to surrealism and pop art. Picasso to Hockney, on exhibit now at the Dayton Art Institute. Details online. Hello and welcome to the Dayton Art Institute's virtual membership reception. We are so thankful for your generous support and your membership. I'm Michael Rediger, the director and CEO of the museum. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the opening of Picasso to Hockney Modern Art on Stage. This will be an exhibition that you're gonna to wanna to see again and again, and especially over the holidays, and comes to us from the McNay Art Museum's Tobin Collection from San Antonio, Texas, and runs through January 17th, 2021. I'm sorry we cannot be together for our traditional festivities due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We're working hard to keep you and our staff safe and healthy. I do hope you have visited the museum since we've reopened in July, and we are currently open on Fridays and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sundays from noon until 5 p.m. Many exciting things continue to happen behind the scenes, like the renovation of the galleries and the completion of the historic hillside. In October, we will welcome back our organ concerts in the Rose Auditorium, so watch for that announcement. And if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to sign up for our virtual and online offerings on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, you'll wanna follow those things for everything that's happening online and at the museum. Also, please continue to watch for virtual programming being offered by our curatorial and education teams who are doing a great job of continuing our mission of being committed to creating meaningful experiences with art that are available to all. Something else that continues is our great partnership with Dayton Metro Libraries and the Reimagining Works Project, which brings commissioned art to all of the libraries inspired by the DAI's collection. An RFP has gone out for commissioned art for the new West Branch Library, and proposals will be accepted through October 18th. The DAI inspiration pieces for this branch are Norman Lewis's Cantata from 1948 and the 20th century Biwa mask from Burkino Faso. The branch is due to open in October of 2021. Thank you to our board of trustees chaired by Brock Anderson. Brock and the board have been so supportive during this difficult time. Also, thank you to our incredible staff and our museum guides who always help to make our special exhibitions so meaningful. A big thank you to our sponsors of Picasso to Hockney. Our benefactor sponsor is Premier Health. Our supporting sponsors are Carolyn and Robert H. Breathen, Perfection Group, Norma Landis and Rick Hoffman and PNC with additional support from Jessup Wealth Management and supporting media sponsor from Think TV. The DAI also receives funding from Montgomery County Arts and Cultural District, Culture Works, and the Ohio Arts Council. Finally, as I'm sure you've heard me say, or you may have read, this year we are uh, facing up to upwards of a $1.5 million loss due to the pandemic. This makes your membership more important than ever, and we thank you for that. I hope you participated in Virtual Oktoberfest. The Signature Events team and the many other staff members and associate board members that helped did a great job of keeping our Oktoberfest tradition alive. If you are able, we ask that you consider making an additional annual fund gift this year to help us close the pandemic gap. Now, you are in for a special treat as we welcome two of our colleagues from the McNay Art Museum. First, uh, I'm excited to present uh, and welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. Richard Asty, Director and CEO of the McNay. Please grab a snack and a beverage and sit back and relax and enjoy a virtual visit with Picasso to Hockney, Modern Art on Stage. Thank you, Michael, and thank you everyone in Dayton for supporting the arts through your incredible organization, the Dayton Art Institute. I had the great privilege of visiting the museum a few years ago, and I am still 
under its spell, which is why we at the McNay are incredibly proud to be sharing our exhibition, Picasso to Hockney, Modern Art on Stage, with you this fall at this remarkable institution. I'm coming to you from our community here in South Texas, in San Antonio, from the very first modern art museum in the entire state. And it opened in 1954 as a celebration of our founder's legacy, a visionary woman, not from Texas, but actually from Ohio, from not too far from you, from DeGraff, Ohio. And though she was raised in Kansas, she went back to Ohio, to Marion, Ohio, where she met later the love of her life, Sergeant Don McNay. So even though they decamped and eventually Marion permanently settled here in San Antonio, Ohio was forever in her heart. Mrs. McNay left us an incredible collection and legacy in 1950, and we opened as the first modern art museum in 1954. And since then, her legacy has influenced local collectors of the art of our time, including Margaret Tobin and her son Robert, two McNay trustees, and also trustees of the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. There, her son Robert in particular, developed a great passion for the theater arts. And by the year 2000, he had amassed over 12,000 masterpieces of set and costume designs, as well as great maquettes. And it's our privilege to bring that collection to you this fall through this groundbreaking exhibition, Picasso to Hockney. And we have so much more to share with you about this pioneering collection today, only rivaled by the Victoria and Albert Museum in London's collection of theater arts. And to do that better, I leave you in wonderful hands with the McNay's curator of theater arts, Dr. Scott Blackshire. And before I leave you in great hands with Dr. Blackshire, I just wanted to thank you again from everyone at the McNay for believing in the power of art to enrich lives everywhere. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Smith, for this wonderful opportunity to join you for your virtual opening of Picasso to Hockney Modern Art on Stage. And thank you, Dr. Asti, for that introduction, as well as the opportunity to send out these wonderful treasures from the Tobin Collection of Theater Arts to various communities across the country. So I've been asked to join you this evening to give you a little insight on the Tobin Collection of Theater Arts and the Picasso to Hockney Modern Art on Stage exhibition. So this evening, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the six different sections of the exhibition, which you'll soon be able to see, as well as give you a little behind the scenes information on how the entire exhibition was put together. I've been in this role as the curator of the Tobin Collection of Theater Arts for a year and a half now, but the first thing that I saw when I came into my office was a beautiful checklist from my predecessor, Dr. Jody Blake, for this amazing exhibition, Picasso to Hockney, Modern Art on Stage. Dr. Blake and her curatorial assistant, Timothy Retzloff, put their passion for theater arts and their love for the Ballet Russe together to create this checklist of about 100 objects that are now on tour across the country. While you might recognize most of these artists from their fine art and visual art, the namesake of the Tobin Collection of Theater Arts, Robert L. B. Tobin, had a heartfelt mandate that theater artists be recognized at the same level as fine artists and visual artists. Picasso to Hockney Modern Art on Stage is an exhibition featuring artists traditionally known for their visual work presented as theater designers. As such, they reemerge in a new light, often redefining their own body of work as well as theater itself. The exhibition is a rare opportunity to experience original designs for theater by Pablo Picasso, Henri Matisse, Natalia Goncharova, Sonia Delaunay, Robert Indiana, Jim Dine, Robert Wilson, David Hockney, and other visual artists. The exhibition holds approximately 110 objects from the famed Tobin Collection of Theater Arts, including paintings, works on paper, maquettes, or small-scale models, and costumes. The exhibition is broken down into six different sections. The pre-Ballet Russe era, artists of the Ballet Russe, revolutionary Russian artists, American and European modernists, neo-romantic and surrealist artists, and contemporary artists and performance art. The beauty of the Picasso to Hockney exhibition is that the artworks are able to be interpreted in many different ways. I provided at the McNay Art Museum a rather chronological overview of the artworks. My colleague, Catherine Pill, at the St. Petersburg Museum of Fine Arts actually found a very unique feminist 
a through line for the exhibition and focused on a lot of the female artists. At the McNay Art Museum, I was inspired to anchor the exhibition on these two artworks, the Pablo Picasso scene design for Pulcinella and David Hockney's poster for his French trilogy at the Met in 1981. The beauty of the Picasso to Hockney Modern Art on Stage exhibition is the strong anchor one can present in the theater arts. At the McNay, I started with this full-scale stage reproduction of Pablo Picasso's scene design for Pulcinella. In addition to what we call the Picasso House, I drew inspiration on David Hockney's trilogy design for his 1981 Met performance of Parade and pulled from that his pop art colors to create a beautiful proscenium. The first three sections of the exhibition are the pre-Ballet Russe artists, artists of the Ballet Russe, and revolutionary Russian artists. While I only have 10 minutes this evening to provide you with this overview, uh, I won't be going over all 100 works of art. Instead, I'll just be picking one or two pieces to uh, provide you a preview of what you'll see in the galleries. For the pre-Ballet Russe artists, I've selected this beautiful shadow puppet of an artist holding a palette from around 1886-1897. The shadow puppet is made out of zinc with fabric inlays and is an example of the puppets that were used in many of the cafes in the Montmartre district of Paris at the time. Specifically, artist Henri Rivere used shadow puppets extensively at Le Chat Noir, a cafe where artists often met to present their latest poetry, to show their artworks. The shadow puppets were a way of creating live theater in a small scale form, oftentimes with social commentary and political satire involved. The second example here from Natalia Goncharova represents the artists of the Ballet Russe. Natalia Goncharova grew up in the outskirts of Moscow and lived in Moscow and trained there as an artist. She eventually moved to Paris and met producer of the Ballet Russe, Serge Diaghilev. This was a time when many artists from throughout Europe were converging on Paris as the art capital of the world, exchanging ideas, experimenting, and developing culture as we've come to know. The costume design for a Spanish dancer is an excellent example of Natalia Goncharova's costume designs, the way she thought of dancers' bodies, the fluidity of the way she thought of fabrics. The costume also exemplifies and shows us the Slavic and Spanish influences through the floral designs, the fringe, and the mantilla. The image on the far right is by Alexandra Exter, who represents revolutionary Russian artists. Alexandra Exter approaches theater design with a constructionist mindset. In the designs you will see throughout the exhibition by Alexandra Exter, you'll notice the angularity, the references to mechanisms and industry. If you're interested in learning more about Alexandra Exter and her constructionist vision, Google Aileta Queen of Mars. In this exhibition, American and European modernist artists are represented by American Paul Cadmus and French artist Henri Matisse. Paul Cadmus' design on the left was a costume design for a motorist in filling station, a ballet written by Virgil Thompson. Along with Virgil Thompson's quintessentially American orchestration, Paul Cadmus brings to life the everyday characters in the ballet, the motorist, the cafe workers, the drivers, everyday people like you and me. And for that time, that was something that was very unique to performance. The beautiful cloak in the middle was designed by Henri Matisse for the emperor character in Le Chant de Rossignol in 1920. It was a ballet russe composition. And in this design, Matisse was able to take his aesthetic, typically applied to canvas, and for the ballet russe and for this character, reinterpret that through fabric and uh, embellishments like gold thread and gold studs. The image on the far right is from 
Russian artist Pavel Chilichev, and he is emblematic of the neo-romantic and surrealist artists. Chilichev anchors his design in a traditional conservatory setting, yet the colors and the uh, surrealist plants are vibrant in that, that acid green and are shapes that, that are not typically recognized. So by blending this traditional with this surrealist aesthetic, he's creating something new and something that will highlight the dancers on stage. The last section of the exhibition focuses on contemporary artists and performance art. In this context, Robert Indiana, who we are most familiar with through his love sculpture, created the designs for sets and costumes for another Virgil Thompson composition, The Mother of Us All, an opera written in the mid-40s with a text by Gertrude Stein focusing on women's suffrage. The production Indiana design was presented at Santa Fe Opera in 1976, the American Bicentennial. His designs are filled with pop art color, red, white, and blue, patriotic elements, eagles, statues, the Statue of Liberty. What you will see in the exhibition from Robert Indiana are beautiful costumes worn by the singers on the stage, but you will also see his artistic renditions of his set designs. The beauty of these designs are the fact that he has rendered them through exquisitely cut paper. From a distance, they look as if they might be oils or pastels, but when you get up close, you can see that they are impeccably crafted cut paper designs, often with an homage to Matisse. Representing performance art is the American producer, director, actor, and activist Leslie Dill. What we're looking at here is her ecstasy dress. Her red ecstasy dress represents her theory of performance art in that she creates these moments and these garments where the individual is to be seen. She uses a lot of texts in her artwork. She uses text and poetry appliqued onto garments. And yet at the same time, she leaves the garments rather unfinished. Up close, you see the threads and the multiple um, shreddings of fabric and the roughness of this work. It's a juxtaposition of the voice that she's giving women in her work, but also at the same time, it's a commentary on women's work and the history of that and breaking free from that. I hope you enjoy Picasso to Hockney, Modern Art on Stage. In the words of the namesake of the Tobin Collection of Theater Arts, Robert L.B. Tobin, it is a wonderful invitation to trace the history of theater through designs created specifically for the stage and the fine arts. So again, I want to thank you very much for this opportunity to share with you the Tobin Collection of Theater Arts, and now I'm going to send it back to Dr. Jerry Smith. Thank you again and enjoy your evening. Hi, I'm Jerry Smith, Chief Curator and Director of Education here at the Dayton Art Institute. And we are thrilled to be able to bring to you our latest special exhibition, Picasso to Hockney, Modern Art on Stage. As you've heard already from Richard Asty and Scott Blackshire, the Tobin Collection at the McNay Art Museum is a rich treasure trove of designs and costumes of theater arts. From the moment this exhibition became available, we were excited to be part, more than two years ago when we first talked about this. So, what is in the exhibition? There's more than 110 works by 30 artists. And as the name of the title indicates, Picasso de Hockney, it's a wide range of artists whose works span the 20th century, actually touching on the 19th, the tail end, and ending in the 21st. Some of the artists' works are, will include people that you may recognize, such as Edward Byrne Jones, the pre-Raphaelite artist, Alphonse Mucha, the Art Nouveau master, who many of you may be familiar with 
through the exhibition that was held here at the DAI not too long ago. Several works are included by great Russian masters, modernists such as Natalia Goncharova, as well as works by surrealists like Georges de Kerko and Jean Cocteau. Look for the French uh, modernists like Henri Matisse, Ferdinand Leger, and Sonia Delaunay, as well as those working in and around Paris, such as Joan Miró from Spain, along with Americans, Laszlo Mahalinaj, Paul Cadmus, Jim Dine, Robert Indiana, and Louisa Nevelson, and of course, Pablo Picasso and David Hockney. The list could go on. There's so much to see and explore in this exhibition, so please come in and see it early because I suspect you'll want to see it more than once. The exhibition really helps dispel the notion of artists working alone in their studio. Instead, it shows artists as engaged with their community and working with other artists, uh, working in collaboration with directors, cinematographers, actors, dancers, and so many more. You'll see how making designs for the theater afforded artists a way to envision works on a grand scale, filling an entire stage, and also to make costume designs that speak to the lived experience. And those costumes also speak to the growing interest we have today in fashion design as a recognized art form. We convey something of ourselves through our clothing and the dramatic costumes in the exhibition speak to the dynamic characters being portrayed on stage, whether it's a king to a suffragette, uh, in stories that are great drama to whimsical comedies, uh, from ballets to tales of science fiction. The visual representations in this exhibition show us how the stage is about more than just telling stories. It's about transporting an audience into a different world through those stories, the music, the dance, the lighting, the costumes, and the stage designs. This is true whether it's a story of everyday life or a look at figures who helped shape history, whether melodrama or a comedy. The theater combines the arts like no other. And just like a stage production, an exhibition is a collaboration. We appreciate our collaboration with our friends at the McNay Art Museum, and I'd like to thank some of our staff who helped make it possible. Fellow curators, Catherine Reichman Siegworth, the Kettering Curator of Photography, Dr. Peter Diebler, the Kettering Curator of Asian Art, and of course, thanks to our registrar, Sally Kurtz, for making all of the arrangements. And to our education team, Casey Goldman, Matt Berge, and Ann Wood, and a big thank you to our head preparator and exhibition designer, Martin Pleiss. Preparator Eric Reith, Luke and preparator apprentice, Jake Tate, helped put the exhibition together, and preparator assistant, Nancy Payne. Really, it takes the entire museum to put the uh, exhibitions together. We could not do it just on our own. So thank you to the entire museum staff. And the muse this exhibition is also particularly timely with theaters closed right now as we fight to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Hopefully it will not be too long before we can visit the theater again. Until then, enjoy Picasso to Hockney, modern art on stage, and hopefully it will give you some fresh insights into the art and the artists who help bring the theater to life. Thank you.